Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to a tutorial about the Hypershade. So this is a subscriber requests and I'm gonna put the plural on there. There's been several people that have watched my video tutorial on the Hypershade and how to use it and they wanted more. So I received several requests so this is hopefully going to satisfy thy need. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see more. So the first thing we're going to do is start off with this scene. This is my shader balls. That is their name. You can download this for free at academicphoenixplus.com. So if you want to follow along, please go ahead and download the free file at academicphoenixplus.com. So I really just need one. So I'm going to go ahead and select these and control H. We are going to be working in the hypershade. I'm going to go ahead and open up the hypershade and you'll notice that it doesn't really look the same. I actually have a specific workspace for my hypershade. So feel free to, uh, watch that video. But if I'm missing anything, for example, the material viewer, I can always go to browse material viewer and here it is. And then just kind of place it into back into its location. And also if you want anything else, here's the properties editor, which I'm going to plug at the bottom, just like it's originally has. And then of course, if I need to, I can always do the create, but I don't really need this because I kind of know what I want. Anytime you open up a scene, it's really important in the hypershade not to delete any of the original shaders. I think I mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it again. Do not delete Lambert one because that's basically the default. Every single model that you create has a Lambert one. So don't touch Lambert one, nor the particle shader or the glow shader or the AI standard service. Just go ahead and leave it like that. And you'll notice that these are the other two that I have, which is the floor and the logo which is this one. This is an area where anytime I create something new, it's going to start building. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a new tab, which is be my workspace. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a basic AI standard surface. So I hit tab AI standard surface. There it is. I select it and then hit enter. So you'll notice that it's got my AI standard surface. You'll also notice the SG node, which means that it can be rendered. We are ready to start. Any action I do on this AI standard, it will also impact here. And we'll also get a preview here. Don't forget to go over here to the top and instead of using hard hardware, you want to use Arnold and then we're going to, we're going to get some really nice renders. Now this will slow down my computer. So I'm going to hit pause because I wanted to, uh, I want to make sure that I have everything set up and render when I'm ready. So by hitting that pause button, I can now change the color of my AI standard surface. And when I hit play, you will see the effect. So over here, we have a shader ball. That's where I'm in right now. I have Arnold and I have interior light color. I'm going to be showing off some of the nodes that are really important in Arnold. There's a lot of them, but I'm going to go over through the basic, the basic ones. My favorite one is AI noise. So hit tab on your keyboard and hit AI noise. We get an AI noise and then I'm going to drag the out color right here and drag it into the base color. Let's see what type of effect AI noise has on our shader. It doesn't seem to have too much of an effect, but it is kind of blotchy and that's the purpose of AI noise. So I'm going to go ahead and increase my octaves, which means that it's going to give it more definition. And you can kind of see how it's starting to create more information in the noise. So instead of just being a very simple blotch, it's now very blotchy. This is where I go into my scale. The next thing I do is increase my scale and I'm going to increase all three X, Y, and Z by five. And you can see now the effect that noise has. This is pretty powerful because it's got a lot of information here and you can use this on several things. Now I'm going to press play. Hopefully my comp this is going to be able to handle it. But if I decrease my lacunarity, you can see the effect. The contrast becomes a lot higher. So this is important because we can use this as an alpha map and I'll show you guys in a little bit what that means. So we also have distortion. So we can increase this really interesting noise. We also have amplitude, offset, and a bunch of other options. If you wanted to stretch this out, you could. For example, instead of doing 555, five, five, you can do 115, and you can get some interesting results. I'm going to leave it at 555, five, five, and then go back to this aspect of it. Now, it does have time, so that means that I can, if I wanted to, I can animate this. So if you needed something to distort, or look like a force field, some people used an animated noise map to be able to uh, create that. If you wanted to change color, here's the color. So again, you can just go ahead and quickly change these colors. You get this really interesting effect. And now we have this really interesting texture to play around with. Now I'm going to undo that because I want my black and white map. 
but I did want to demonstrate to you guys what you could do with um, the noise. The next thing I wanted to show you guys is the ability to use what's called an AI mix shader. So I'm going to hit tab and this is my second favorite shader which is AI mix shader and you'll notice that it does in fact have an SG node which means that it can be rendered. The, no the noise doesn't have an SG node but the mix shader does which means that I can attach this to a model and it will render. All right, so what is an AI mix shader? Well, it actually mixes two shaders into one. So right now it's black because there's no shader attached. So I'm gonna grab this out color and drag it into my AI, into my mix shader. And you can see the effect right away that my AI mix shader now has this spotty looking shader, which is shader two. Now I'm gonna grab another shader. So I'm gonna give myself some space here. Hit tab, AI standard. So anything I have selected, it will render. I'm gonna go ahead and pause. I change this to red just to demonstrate to you guys how AI mix shader works. Pretty red. And what I'm gonna do is drag my out color and drag it into shader two. Let's grab that AI mix shader and let's see what happens. So what you're seeing is a mix between AI standard, AI standard one, which is the noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to AI standard noise. And then this one, which is just red, which I'm going to call the red shader. I have the AI mix shader selected and you'll notice that there is a weight. If I drag this to the left, you'll notice that the noise shader is the strongest. And if I drag this to the right, you'll notice that the red is the strongest. So by using zero to one, you can actually get an interesting mix. So what is the purpose of an AI mix shader? Well, you can actually do a lot with it because uh, zero to one means that it's black and white. I can actually attach a black and white image so I can mix these two. For example, remember this AI noise shader? Well, I'm actually going to disconnect it. I'm gonna go ahead and select this little connection and just press delete on your keyboard. When I select AI standard noise, you'll notice that it's black because the color is now disconnected. I'm gonna change this to a preset and I'm gonna choose something fun like, let's do gold and replace. So this is gold and I'm going to rough up it a little bit just so that it looks like scratch gold. I'm going to go back to my AI mix shader and see what that looks like. Kind of neat actually. Mixing gold with red together gives it this really interesting color. So now I have my AI noise and you guys remember what it looked like before. So I'm going to select it and this time I'm going to grab it and try to connect it into the mix. And you'll notice that it doesn't let me. Even though this is a color of black and white, AI mix can only accept zero to one. And the reality is, is that AI noise is in fact has an RGB. Remember how we changed the colors? Well, that's because it actually has an RGB channel. So in out color, I'm gonna open up this little plus sign and you can see that it's got RGB. So using this information, I can actually grab R and drag it into the mix. And you can, act, you can grab G or B, it doesn't matter because the map that we currently have is black and white. So it's an even color of red, green, blue on all channels. And now we'll see the results. So as you can see, we are having a very clean gold, a very clean red, and there's a little bit of that transition because of the noise. So we're getting some really nice results. Now if I select the noise map, Unfortunately, it doesn't give a preview, so I can no longer see what it looks like. We now have an AI noise, one of my favorite shaders. My second favorite is Mix Shader. And I'm gonna talk about the next uh, shader that is going to help us clean this render up a little bit, which is the AI range. So I'm gonna hit tab and go to AI range. AI range means that it's gonna clamp colors together. You can control the color. Now I know it's getting a little busy and that's very common when you're working in the hypershade. So if you want to, you can collapse something. So for example, I'm going to rename this gold shader and then I'm gonna hit the number one, which is gonna collapse it. I'm gonna hit one on this one too. One, one, move these around so they're kinda close to each other. And I have my AI noise, so I'm gonna keep it like this for now, and I'm fine with the SG node, so I can collapse that too. So just to demonstrate what AI range does, it's actually easier to see if we have it, you know, in the preview. So I'm gonna create another AI standard surface. And this is the one we're gonna be previewing. And it's okay to connect several maps together. So I'm gonna grab the out color and drag it into this base. 
This is what the current AI noise looks like. So let's see what AI range does. So unfortunately, I can't just drag it in here, just wiggle it around and it connects. I actually have to physically connect all of them. So I'm going to grab the out color, connect it into the input, and then I'm going to grab the out color and connect it into the base. So now it's connected. So now the AI noise is attached to the AI range, which is connected to the surface shader. And you'll notice that there's no change. So AI range, what it does is that it clamps colors together. What that means is that instead of going from white to black and have all these gray scales, it will reduce the amount of gray. And that's why it's called clamping. For example, let me show you what that means. I'm going to press play and then I'm going to move it to the right the grays are starting to disappear. That's because the white is being pushed away. But I can do it the other way around. I can actually bring in the white a little closer and I can start getting really pure whites until I get so close that it looks like this. I'm gonna bring that back. And same thing with the output max. I can, if I bring this color output max to the left, to a smaller, I get similar results. And if I go the other way, um, the output max, you can see that I can get pretty good colors. I can increase the contrast or I can decrease it. So it's a really powerful tool because if you're trying to get some really nice whites, you can increase the contrast, decrease the input max, and increase the output max. You can also just play around with it and kind of reduce the grays or increase the whites. So you can see that I've I'm bringing my input max a little closer, and if it's too even, you'll see the numbers are too much the same, so I'm gonna change this to like 0.35. So it's, kind of, it's a fun tool to use because it's very, very powerful. So I'm gonna play around a little bit more, increase the contrast, and I'm trying to get this really nice looking white and black and just a little bit of gray on the edges. Now they're starting to look noisy, so I'm kind of worried that it's what it's gonna do when we plug it into it. So let's take a look. I'm gonna go ahead and hit pause. And I'm going to grab the AI range. And just like before, you'll notice that if I try to replace it in the AI mix, it won't work. So hit the little plus sign, grab the R, or, or this time grab the G, it doesn't really matter. And let's see what that looks like to our AI mix shader. So select your AI mix shader, press play, and there you go. You have a very, very clean contrast between the white and the black, and therefore the gold and the red are now working together. So we get this really interesting, almost like camouflage look, which actually I might as well change it to that. So let me go to my original AI standard surface. I can change this to maybe like a forest green. Let's see what that looks like. It's gonna be metallic. So I might wanna decrease the metalness and increase my roughness. Then I'm gonna grab my red shader and changes this to maybe an even darker green. I'm gonna increase my roughness again because I don't want it to be shiny. And then let's take a look at the Mix AI Mix Shader. And there you go, that's how you can get a little bit of a, it's not, of course it's not perfect camouflage, but the, the concept is there. Those are some of my favorite nodes. I don't need this one anymore, so I can go ahead and delete it by hitting delete on the keyboard. And now I'm going to assign it into my shader ball. So I'm gonna grab my objects, right click, assign existing material, AI mix shader, and let's render. And there we go. That is the hyper shade. We can quickly create some really nice shaders using the nodes that's provided by Maya. It's considered as procedural shading. So let's review what we went over. I'm gonna open up the hyper shade again. I'm going to grab this guy and click on this one, which will bring it all together. So we went over, of course, AI standard surfaces. We went over AI noise, the AI range, and also the AI mix shader and how all three of them, or all one, two, three, all four of these nodes give us this really cool effect on our model. Hopefully you found that helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. And of course, like and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, usually the, when you guys subscribe and make comments and share my videos with others, it really encourages to make more of these videos. So let me know if you want more Hypershade tutorials. I actually really enjoy trying to make procedural shaders. So if you want to see more, just let me know. And don't forget, you can always go to academicphoenixplus.com to get this model for free. And there's also a, a bunch of other models for free as well that you can download, plus eBooks, free trainings, and so much more. So all for you. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching and keep creating and I will see you next time.